What is up YouTube? Welcome to Panfro Games and today I want to discuss the great debate between Dredna and Rotom. These are two of the most polarizing objectives in Pokemon Unite right now and I want to talk about the pros and cons of each one, what you should be doing, the meta versus the brand new anti-meta that people are talking about in regards to Dreadnought versus Rotom. And before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Both Rotom and Dreadnought have the same respawn timer. So they will spawn at the seven minute mark of the match and they'll have a 30 second countdown on the mini map. And they have a two minute respawn. So 120 seconds in game. After 120 seconds, they'll appear again on the map with another 30 second timer appearing on the mini map. So that is where they are the same, that they are both map objectives that spawn at the same time. This is where they differ. So Rotom, Rotom's awards is 20 Aos energy for the one who takes it out, not for the full team, just for the singular Pokemon who takes it out. And the effect of Rotom is this Rotom will fight for your team until it reaches the enemy goal. And upon reaching the enemy's goal, it will allow insta scoring for 15 seconds on the goal. And it'll also disable the goal's regen and shield effect. So overall, it ends up being a mini Zapdos effect, which is phenomenal. But the issue is with Rotom, the cons here is one, you got to defeat Rotom pretty quickly as... Instead of regening its health, Rotom actually gains more max HP over time the longer it takes you to take it out. So when it's in top lane, you actually rather be an attacker or some sort of speedster to actually take out the Rotom because a defender will not most likely do enough damage in time. Unless you're Crustle with Stealth Rocks, then you can actually do that. And the other issue of Rotom is once you defeat Rotom, you have to worry about two things. You have to worry about... Rotom 1 reaching the enemy's goal which is really hard because Rotom it does not move that quickly and you can't make Rotom move any faster so you have to sort of protect Rotom and Rotom will stop the first sign of an enemy shows up and it'll attack the enemy and the enemy can also push back Rotom someone like Blastoise has the perfect kit to push them away Surf will push them all the way back same with Hydro Pump so if you are facing a Blastoise, Rotom can be really hard counter, which is also one of the reasons why Blastoise is so good because he he's really good at securing both objectives and defending both objectives really well. So Rotom overall, really good in theory, really good. If you can get it to work, if you can get Rotom to hit the goal, incredibly good. And now for Dreadnought, and very similar to Rotom, Dreadnought spawns at the 7 minute mark just like Rotom has a 30 second timer on the mini map and can spawn up to three times and dreadnought will instead of increasing its max hp will just recover its hp if the pokemon is not attacked for a long enough time or you get out of its range and it'll go back to the center and regen all its health the main difference between rotom and dreadnought is while yes they both of these objectives get 20 aos energy to the person who gets the last hit but dreadnought has team-wide effects like team exp which is nearly a full level and i believe it is uh 87 of a level when you take out dreadnought which is massive because that applies to your whole entire team they don't even need to be in the fight to receive that bus this is a global buff and everyone also gets a 60 second shield so this makes your team immediately stronger than your opponents and they can take more hits because not only are they probably just leveled up higher than their opponents but they also have a shield to take these hits Great for taking ultimate abilities. In a sense, you're pushing bottom lane like Rotom will be pushing top lane, but the players are doing the direct pushing themselves. And the beauty is most of the team is already at Dreadnought. You already have a full team just to push bot and at least take out the first tower and maybe even the second, right? So that is where the difference between Rotom and Dreadnought is. So what is better, Rotom or Dreadnought? And the obvious answer here is Dreadnought because Dreadnought really gives everyone on your team exp and a shield and it's you're making it so you're ahead of the enemy already whether or not you actually do something with those points you got or after that team fight you beat them in for dreadnought doesn't really matter because you got the exp and levels are everything in this game so dreadnought is the meta we can we already know that right and dreadnought is very important so if you're playing the game you want to be in top or jungle because when you're doing a dreadnought situation, you're going to have your bot laners, two people already down there. Your jungler needs to rotate down to bot. So now you have three people. 
And then you have your top laners. And this is where the great meta versus anti-meta debate comes up. Should both top laners go down to Dreadnought? Or should one top laner go down to Dreadnought? And then the other top laner focuses on Rotom. And honestly, my thought on this is it depends on the situation. There are pros and cons to both of these scenarios. And I really think the anti-meta Rotom play has a huge role. Because let's say your team is going all the way down to Dreadnought every single time. All three times. And let's say they have one person on their team going up to Rotom. So you're in a 5v4 situation with Dreadnought. You're most likely going to win these scenarios. Let's say you win two out of the three scenarios, but they get the Rotom all three times. And since your team is so hyper-focused on this Dreadnought, they're able to score points and goals on you. So that matters a lot because when you think about this, the one person who's scoring all these goals in top lane, not only are they scoring points on you, and potentially taking out both of your top lane goals, which has happened to me. And that person is also really high level, even without any Dreadnought buffs. Because when you're scoring, you are gaining EXP. And they are killing uh, enemies to get more points too. They're you know taking all the Vespa Queens. They're taking the Aldinos. Because we're not really having anyone in top lane. So they're going to have one person who may actually be a level higher or two. And you're also going to be down... In the very late game when the Zato situation comes up because they've already scored more points on you and they'll be easier for them to backdoor you in that sense because if everyone is focusing on a fight in the middle, someone could just go up to your center and just score it pretty easily because no one's going to go back and then try to stop it. It'll be too late by the time they notice. So I think there is a lot of value to the Rotom anti-meta play. And another big thing is you only need the last hit on Dreadnought. So you can win that 5v4 situation on Dreadnought. It just really depends on your team comp. If you have some defenders who can knock up Pokemon, like a Snorlax is a great snipe. If you have a Venusaur or a Solar Beam who doesn't need to be in the fight. If you have someone like your Ninja who can assassinate a lot of Pokemon quickly. There's a lot of possibilities going on for this anti-meta play. But is it necessarily better than five people going down? Well, it depends. If it's a 5v5 situation, well, then it's going to be a fight for Rotom after the Dreadnought. And, I mean, the team that wins Dreadnought will probably get the Rotom in that case. But, at the same time, you never know. And, at overall, at the end of the day, the Dreadnought objective is more important. I will say one thing because I did forget to mention before. If you do get the last Dreadnought, the third Dreadnought, you do get a 90 second debuff on your team for attacking Zapdos. So I don't recommend going for Dreadnought if you're already ahead. Or maybe go for it if you have a Wigglytuff who can alt. Because Wigglytuff's alt will actually remove the team uh, debuff against Zapdos. Which is a 90 second long debuff. And also uh, Blissey's Safeguard will remove that debuff as well. So those are just a couple of things about. And I want to hear in the comments below. How do you feel about the meta versus the anti-meta? Dreadnought, all five going down to Dreadnought, or maybe four going down to Dreadnought and one person focusing on Rotom. I think one person focusing on Rotom and four going down is my new play, and I've been trying out this idea more often. And I would only do this idea personally if they don't have a tower, or I mean, if they don't have a goal in bot lane, like your bot lane already won, and they don't have a goal, I think that is the play to have four people go down and take the Dreadnought because they don't have a way to heal themselves. So you can easily take out the enemies and then you can focus on Rotom. But if both teams have their goals up still, well, I think it's up in the air and you got to really pay attention to your team comp and see if your team can win a 4v5 situation. Because if you have, you know, a bunch of high meta Pokemon, then there is a possibility. And if you're playing someone like a Cinderace in top, well... I think you should go for Rotom and see how that works out for you. Well, guys, thank you for listening to my sort of like a video essay thoughts on this topic that I've been seeing a lot in the Discord and Reddit. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll catch you guys next time with more Pokemon Unite action. Peace out and have a good one.